एवरीवन वेलकम टू टू चैनल चैनल नॉलेज ऑफ़ फ्रेंड्स सब्सक्राइब एंड क्लिक द बेल आइकन फॉर द लेटेस्ट अपडेट आज हम आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस की क्लास करने वाले हैं जो कि क्लास फोर्टीन है हमने जो अगर हम बात करते हैं तो हम यूनिट टू के इंट्रोडक्शन टू सर्च की क्लास करने वाले हैं जो कि टू मार्क्स पॉसिबल क्वेश्चन है अगर आप हमारे चैनल फर्स्ट टाइम देख रहे हो तो मैं आपको बता दूँ हम लोग यूनिट वन आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस में यूनिट टू यूनिट थ्री यूनिट फोर यूनिट फाइव ऑलरेडी कंप्लीट कर चुके हैं एंड यूनिट वन के पॉसिबल टू मार्क्स क्वेश्चंस भी हम लास्ट क्लास में कर चुके हैं सो इट्स अ ह्यूज रिक्वेस्ट फ्रॉम माय साइड टू ऑल द व्यूवर्स प्लीज गो थ्रू विद द सब्सक्राइब बटन एंड प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब अवर चैनल सो दैट मैनी एंड मैक्सिम पीपल कैन गेट द इन्फॉर्मेशन एट वंस एंड एम इन दू कैन ऑल्सो इन्जॉय द वीडियो एज वेल Now we'll go ahead with the introduction to search here. That is, the question is that state the significance of using heuristic function, and uh, where uh, the significance of using the heuristic functions that what we have to discuss here. Significance of using. heuristic functions that what we have to discuss here in this that uh, the heuristic function is a way to inform the search about the directions to a goal it provides an informed way to goes which neighbor of the node will lead to a goal here the heuristic function helps to guide the search process in the most profitable directions by suggesting uh, uh, which a uh, path uh, to follow that when more uh, than one path is available here so here with this same concept now we'll discuss about distinguish between state space search and a plane plan space uh, search and that is has been asked of 10 marks in 6 uh, 16 and 17 difference between state space search and plan space search in the same uh, case if i'm talking about uh, so here this is very important because this has been asked of two marks here and that is the uh, state uh, space uh, search and plan uh, space search here in the first state space search that in a state space search there is a con uh, commitment in plan step ordering and a plan space search here in a plan space search there is no commitment in a plan step ordering and for the state space search uh, that is your uh, that can suffer with goal ordering here and for the plan here that uh, the plan space search do not suffer from goal ordering state space search handles goal interactions poorly and a plan space search uh, that handles the goal interactions efficiently as well now we'll go ahead to discuss about what do you mean by a local maxima with respect to the search technique local maxima with respect to search technique with the same concept here this has been asked of two marks so local maxima as a state uh, better uh, that the logical uh, local regions on neighboring states but not a good maxima this is a require a sense of better solution exists which is not the vicinity of the present state and we are in the same case uh, for this we have a graph this is a state space this is objective function and here the graph is and here this is your current state this is global maxima this is local maxima and this is a, a graph that you have to represent it here 
let's go ahead with another one that is you define uninformed search here and in an uninformed uninformed search is used by a search procedures which explore all the uh, i will go ahead with uninformed search here in uninformed search that uninformed search is used by a search procedures which explore all alternative during the search process and they do not have a domain specific knowledge all they need are in the initial state and the final state and the set of legal operators as well let's go ahead with the write a short note on a horizon effect this has also been asked of 10 marks horizon effect in the horizon effect the horizon effect is a problem that involves an extremely long sequence of moves that clearly led to a strong advantages for one player here the sequence of moves takes uh, more moves than in allowed by a bounded search as well going ahead with the detail that we have to answer that write down the time and space complexity of dfs search strategies time and space complexity of dfs search strategies with this this has been asked of uh, two marks here in 1819 and the time complexity of the depth for search is your v power d and the space complexity uh, we have here is your that is of the DFS is this. So this is you can answer it out in a two marks uh, question paper. The another one is your that desirable properties of search algorithm. So properties of heuristic search algorithm here. Properties of heuristic search algorithm. that what we have and that is we have four properties the first property is that completeness the second is space complexity the third is time complexity and the fourth we have is your optimality optimality here in this these are the four properties of heuristic search algorithm here now we'll go ahead to discuss what are the problems in hill climbing problems in hill climbing in the problems in hill climbing if i'm talking about here so where we have a uh, three problems and that is the first is your local maxima second is your plateau and the third is your ridge these were the three problems that uh, we face in hill climbing next we will go ahead to discuss what do you mean by the futility cutoff Futility cutoff. The futility cutoff means that terminating the explorations of a sub tree that offers uh, that little uh, possibility and uh, for improvement over the other known path. An alpha beta that can be extended to cut off search on paths that are only slightly improved in is called futility cutoff. The another one we'll discuss about is that is your informed search. In informed search, the informed search algorithm contains an array of knowledge such as how far we are from the goal, path to cost, and how to reach the goal node, etc. This knowledge helps agents to explore less to their search space and find more efficiently the goal node here. Now we'll go ahead to discuss, write down the types of production system. Types of production system in 
in the types of production system we have four types of production system the first we have here is monotonic production system the second we have non monotonic production system third is partially commutative production system and the fourth we have is a commutative production system now i'll talk about the another one that is what are characteristics of production system that is the product, product uh, characteristics here characteristics of production system we have a uh, four characteristics of production system here that is simplicity the second is modularity third is modifiability and the fourth we have here is knowledge intensive now we'll talk about the another one that is your adversarial search that is define adversarial search here in adversarial search the adversarial search is the search in which two or more players with a conflicting goals are trying to explore the same search space for the solution the second we have here and uh, after that we have constant satisfaction procedure constraint satisfaction procedure in this constant satisfaction procedure uh, that is a search procedure that operates in a space of constant set the initial state uh, contains the constants that are origin originally given in the problem description as well the another what we have to discuss is your alpha beta pruning in alpha beta pruning here that it is your alpha beta pruning is a modified version of the min max algorithm it is an optimization technique for the min max algorithm here so that is uh, in the terms of it uh, the unit 2 now we'll go ahead with the another one which uh, we will discuss in the terms of memory based question as i told you about it in the memory based question of unit 2 introduction to search the question first question that has been arise here in the case of the memory based question in the memory based questions here that what we have to discuss here and in these the first question is what is search process and uninformed search we had even though discuss about this so we'll go ahead with the some of the uh, you know uh, uh, that in in detail uh, that is the search process uh, so that is you know very well that is comes under memory based question so that is the searching is the sequence of steps that transforms the initial state to a goal state and ai program that has to do the process searching for the solution step and the solution steps are not known uh, before ha beforehand and used uh, in that need to be find it out as well and we are the another they had asked you about in the memory based that is define uninformed search so that is it is also called a brute force search and a blind search and exhaustive search as well this type of a search is commonly used by the search procedures which explore all the alternatives during the search process 
and they do not have domain specific knowledge all they need are in the initial state and the final state and the set of legal operators as well we are in the same case if i'm talking about uh, with uh, give the desirable properties of heuristic search algorithm which we, even though we had discussed about it and that has been asked uh, of in the memory based question so that is the properties of the heuristic search algorithm we have admissibility conditions completeness condition dominance conditions and optimality kind of property as well and uh, the, the another question is your yeah, discuss generate and test algorithm the question is generate and test algorithm generate and test algorithm in this in a generate and a test technique that generate uh, will uh, create a possible solution and the tester will evaluate each proposed solution either accepting or rejecting that solution the action may stop when uh, one acceptable solution is found or action may continue until all possible solutions are found here now we'll go ahead to discuss about explain hill climbing algorithm even though which we had discussed but now we'll go ahead in a detail as well so in hill climbing algorithm here the generate and test method is augmented by the heuristic function which measures the closeness of the current state to the goal state and it is called as discrete optimization algorithm and it is uh, sometimes called called greedy local search because it grabs a good neighbor state without thinking ahead about what where to go next here now we'll go ahead with the discussion that is we have your problems in hill climbing even though that what we had discussed even though the problems in hill climbing is the local maximum and plateau and the ridges as well now we'll go ahead with the another discussion that I write a short note on now we'll go ahead with the discussion write a short note on a best first search in the best best search that what we have to discuss here and the best uh, first search that what we have to discuss here is the best first search allows us to switch between the path thus gaining the benefits of both a depth first search and a breadth first search in this the evaluation function is an indicator of how far the code is from the goal and it involves an or graph which avoids the problem of the node duplicacy as well now we'll discuss about a abstract algorithm In a abstract algorithm here, if it is possible for one to obtain the evaluation function values and that cost function values, then a abstract algorithm can be used. The basic principle is that sum the you know a cost and evaluation function values for a state to get its goodness award as well. Now we'll go ahead to discuss about discuss the means ends analysis. This is all related to the memory based question. Means ends analysis. In means ends analysis is that if discuss means ends analysis, the state of a system is a description that is sufficient to determine the future. The means ends analysis is a standard method for selecting the transition. Its purpose is to identify a procedure that causes a transition from the current state and goal state. It involves states and procedures for reducing the difference between states as well. Now we'll go ahead with another one that is what do you mean by R graph? In the R graph here, in this graph, from uh, each node there emerges a set of arcs, one from each of the alternative moves that can be made from the state represented by the originating nodes the nodes pointed by those arcs is known as successor of the originating node as well now we'll discuss and over graph in the and or graph here 
anion or graph is uh, what is anion or graph that had asked you the anion or graph is used for representing the solutions of the problem that can be solved by decomposing them into a set of smaller problems all of which must uh, be solved and this decomposition generates arcs that we call and arcs and one and arcs uh, that may point uh, to any number of successor node all of, of which must be solved in order for the arc to point uh, to the solution and in our graph several arcs may emerge from a single node and indicating a variety of the ways in which the original problem might be solved and that is why the structure is called an or graph now we'll discuss about game playing the another questions that is game playing in the terms of the game playing here that is uh, the playing game is a computer that is what is game playing so playing game is the computer is one of the major goals of researchers in the computer science and the first chess program was written by Claude uh, Shannon you and by Alan Turing the checkers and considers a landmark in the area of the computer game playing as well we are talking about what are the methods available for uh, game playing methods available for game playing so in methods there are the two methods uh, for game playing are the first is the minimax strategies and the minimax the second is minimax strategy, uh, strategy with alpha beta cutoffs here now we'll discuss discuss a minimax strategy minimax strategy in minimax strategy here that is a simple strategy for the two persons game playing here one player is called a maximizer and the other is called the minimizer both the player maximizer and minimizer fight it out to see that the opponent gets a minimum benefit while they get the maximum benefit as well the second is your that is alpha beta cutoff or pinning alpha beta cut off or pruning in this the basic idea of the alpha beta cut off is it is possible to compute the correct minimax decision without looking at every node in the search tree and this is called pruning as well so with this we have the first one as your alpha in the alpha here the highest value that the maximizer can guarantee himself by making some move at the current node or at the same node earlier on the path to this node as well the second we have here is your beta in the beta the lowest value that the minimizer can guarantee by making some move at the current node or at some node earlier on the path on this path uh, to this node as well that is your alpha and beta right next go ahead with another one that write a short note on a horizon effect in the term of horizon effect here in horizon effect an inevitable event that can be delayed by a various delaying ii uh, until the tactics it does not appear in the form and the portions of the game tree that minimax explores a horizon effect that can also influences a program perceptions of good moves and now we'll go ahead to discuss what is uh, the futility cutoff even though that what we had discussed about it futility cut off in the futility cut off it means terminating the explorations of a sub tree that offers title possibility for improvement over other known path is called futility cut off and alpha beta that can also be extended to cut off search on paths that are only slightly improved is called futility cut off here let's go ahead with the another one and that what we have to discuss on the basis of application based question application based questions here design a search the first question for application based question here design a search tree for finding a route uh, from a to g that we have to design here 
and on the basis of that uh, we have to uh, the initial state would be the a because here we have to design a search tree for uh, that uh, from uh, you know a to g and then after expanding a we have to expand it a and then after expanding b so we'll go ahead to uh, solve it out so that you will be getting it out or how we do that this is a we'll have to expand this this is b c and this is d after this we will be expanding our b here that is e f and g so this is the application based uh, that uh, first question where we have to you know uh, from uh, a to g we have to move it out and the question itself said that design a search tree for finding the route from a to g so we had done it here okay so first you have to uh, initiate uh, with a and then after expand a and then after that you have to expand b and you will be finding out now the another question is depict the tic tac toy problem depict tic tac toy problem for first is the first question is for nine board position nine board position for the nine board position we have to use the tic tac toy and for that we have here So here this is your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So this is a 9 board position that we had represented here. The second thing we had asked. Now we will discuss the second part which is your 8 uh, board position. In the 8 board position here we have a set that is this is x and the another we have here is your after 2 moves uh, that it uh, takes us. After two moves here, that is, it will be represented as x, and this is will be the zero here. So now we'll go ahead to discuss about the illustrate the problem in the hill climbing with the help of a diagram. So that we'll go ahead to discuss here, and that is your first we have is your local, uh, that is maxima. Local maxima plateau and we have your ridges in the local maxima here it will be 0 it will be h and this will be sort of Here, this is our diagram for the local maxima. For the plateau here, we have for the local plateau. If I'm talking about this is zero. This is uh, always be an H here, and that is in the reference towards it. But we find it all for the local maxima plateau and the ridges and the hill climbing. So here this is this is the narrow and that is your plateaus. So these were plateaus and now we'll talk about the ridges as well. This is your zero. So here we have this is in the same case 
so these were the ridges as well so let's go ahead to discuss about the evaluation based question evaluation based question this is uh, the question is in this type of a search search begins by expanding the initial node by using operator generate all successor of the initial node and test them a variant of this search called backtracking and search uses less memory predict the search technique you have to predict the search technique here and that is evaluation based questions as well so i repeat the question in this type of a search search begins with expanding the initial node by using operator generate all successors of the initial node and test them a variant of this search called backtracking search uses less memory and then predict the search technique so that is your depth first search the first is depth first search the second question for this we have here that is the in a search in this search the searching progress level by level an operator is employed to generate all possible children of node it has the member remember that it has to remember every node it has generated name the technique so in this search the searching progress level by level an operator is employed to generate all possible children of the node and it has to remember every node it has generated name the technique so the second we have is your breadth for search the third question we have here the following data represented the sum criteria on which a uniform uh, that uninformed uniform search strategies is based and identify the search technique where the complete is no time is uh, that a space is also uh, zero b key power dim and optimal is no so that is your the depth for search now we'll go ahead with the another question and that is predict the type of the graph it is the simplest kind of graph in this graph from each node their images a set of arcs one for each of the alternative moves that can be made from the state representing uh, by originating uh, node as well so the question is repeat the question that is predict the type of a uh, graph it is the simplest kind of graph in this graph from each node their images are set of arcs one or for each of the alternative moves that can be made from the state represented by the originating node and that is your uh, that is your or graph the another question is that identify the strategy for the game playing the basic idea of this strategy is it is possible to compute the correct minimax decision without looking at every node in the search tree when this strategy is applied in the standard minimax tree it returns the same moves as minimax would and that is your the fifth is your cut b alpha beta cut off alpha beta cut off and now we'll go ahead with the another one question and that is we have to predict the search strategy it refers to experience the base technique for problem solving learning and discovery this means uh, this method is used to speed up the process of finding a good enough solution where an exhaustive search is impractical and where that answer would be your heuristic search now the another question has been arised here and this is the end of your uh, that is of unit 2 introduction to search of two marks possible questions now we'll go ahead to discuss about the unit 3 that is your knowledge representations and reasoning two marks possible question that what we have to discuss here let's go ahead with that for the unit 3 we have that is knowledge representation and reasoning two marks possible questions 
so now we'll go ahead with the detail here that is the we'll discuss first memory based questions here in this that is memory based questions in the memory based question start with this only and then we'll continue many more as well and in the terms of the memory based questions if i'm talking about here so in this uh, memory based question the first question has been arise like give the meaning of knowledge representation and that is very important so in that same case uh, that uh, the define uh, the meaning of knowledge representation so knowledge uh, representation is the study of the ways of picturization of knowledge and how uh, that effectively it uh, resembles the representations of knowledge in human brain and it has a uh, two entities the first is your facts and the representative which i had told you then uh, when we had discussed in the detail of this unit the second question has been arise is your that what do you mean by knowledge acquisition so first we'll have to discuss about knowledge representation now we'll discuss about knowledge acquisition in knowledge acquisition here that what we have to discuss what do you mean by the knowledge acquisition so knowledge acquisition is the process of acquiring knowledge from a human expert from an expert system which must be carefully organized into if then rules or some other forms of knowledge representation as well let's go ahead with the detail here that what are the various schemes of knowledge representations so here in the rep re representing the various scheme here various schemes of knowledge representation so here we have your six uh, schemes here the first we have that is predicate logic the second here is your semantic network the third we have your conceptual dependency the fourth we have here is your theme the fifth is your script the sixth we have fuzzy logic these were the various schemes of knowledge representation and that is uh, there are several representation schemes that has been become more popular among the artificial intelligence that is your predicate logic semantic network and uh, that is your conceptual dependencies frames scripts and fuzzy logic as well now we'll go ahead to discuss about the another one and that what you have to discuss what do you mean by logic in the what do you mean by logic here the logic means drawing conclusion on the basis of condition logic can be defined as scientific study of the process of reasoning uh, of a system of rules or procedure that has the re uh, resources uh, that a resonance process as well it is of two type the first is your predicate logic and the second is your propositional logic predicate logic and the second is your proposition logic in terms of predicate logic if i'm talking about the first order predicate logic they had asked you about it and that is the first order logic uses an additional notion and these are the quantifiers predicate and terms and the structures of fo PL that is flexible enough to permit to accurate representation of the national language and this is important in the AI uh, system since most knowledge must originate with uh, uh, with and be consumed by the humans as well. In the talking about propositional logic, the major normal forms in the proposition logic we have. The first we have here is your that is your conjunctive. In this we have conjunctive. normal form which is uh, a formula is said to be a cnf of it uh, has like a that a uh, one and a two a two that is has been the atoms or the equations of the atom has been represented here the conjunctive normal form 
this was the normal form of propositional logic the second we have is your uh, that is disjunctive normal form these were the memory boost question as well let's go ahead to discuss another one that is define inferences in define inferences here in this inferences uh, that what we have to discuss and in the inferences the info means to derive a conclusion from the fact or the premises and they are the two common rules for deriving the new fact from the rules that known fact and they are, are the modus ponens and modus tollens they are the two types of inferencing method as well and that we have here is the first is the forward chaining system second we have here is your backward chaining system in the backward uh, here that uh, has been represented now discuss the backward deduction what is backward deduction here In the backward deduction, the backward chaining starts uh, with a list of the goals and works backward to see if there is a data available that will support any of these goals and references uh, uh, that an interfaces engine that is using it would search an inferences rule until it finds one which has then class and that matches a desired goal as well. Now we'll talk about the another one that is your resolution. In the term of resolutions here, in 1965, uh, the Robinson introduced the in resolution principle, which can be directly applied to any set of clauses. And uh, this principle is any two clauses A and B, if there is a literal P1 and in uh, A, which has complementary literal P2 in B, so delete P1 and P2 from A and B, and then construct our disjunctions of the remaining clauses. This clause is uh, so constructed is called res uh, resolvent of A and B here. Now we will go ahead to discuss about the properties of semantic network. Properties of semantic network. This has also been asked of memory based questions only. So in the properties of semantic based uh, network, there are the properties of semantic networks. The first we have here inheritance and this uh, the inheritance the second we have that is your we have here uh, that the second we have and that is your multiple inheritance And the third we have here is your inverse link. So now we'll go ahead to discuss about the another one that is your the advantages of frames. Advantages of frames. In the advantages of frames if I am talking about, so here there are many advantages but we will talk about near, near about 4 to 5 here uh, that is your advantages. The first is your a frame collects information about an object in a single place in an organized fashion and by relating slots to the other kinds of frame, a frame can represent the typical structures involving an object. 
Frames provides a way of associating the knowledge with objects and frames may be a relatively efficient way of implementing artificial intelligence application as well. Where the frames allows data that are stored and computed to be treated in the uniform uh, manner as well. Now we'll talk about the advantages and we'll go ahead with the disadvantages of frames as well. In disadvantages of frames, if I'm talking about the first disadvantage is a slot of fillers must be real data and it is not possible to quantify over slots. And the third is it is necessary to repeat the same information to make it usable from a different viewpoints as well. Let's go ahead with another one that is what is Minsky frame system theory. Minsky frame system theory in this Minsky frame a system theory that is your Minsky uh, that proposed a uh, frame as a means of representing the common sense knowledge and he proposed that the knowledge is organized into a small packet called frame with the content of the frame that are in a certain slots which have the values all frames of a given situations constitute the system uh, whenever one encounters a situation a series of frames are activated and reasoning is done I will go ahead with another one that is we have to discuss about the discuss the scripts and uh, that is the knowledge representation scripts and knowledge representation here so in the uh, scripts in the knowledge representation here a script is defined as knowledge representation structure used for describing the stereotype sequence of actions it consists of a set of slots and each slot is associated with information about the slot the script tells people what can happen in a situation what event follow and what role every you know actors plays here i'll go ahead to discuss about the strength of scripts strength of scripts in the strength of scripts here that is a script uh, in the terms uh, of it there are the three strength we will discuss here and that is the scripts can predict events and answer question and it provides a framework for integrating the observation into a coherent interpretation where the third is that it provides a means uh, that for detecting the unusual uh, events as well uh, where in the strength will go ahead with the weakness as well in the weakness of script if i'm talking about so here the weakness of script that either script only account for detail in a restricted domain so that they are not interested or they apply every view which is not likely as well and now we'll go ahead to discuss about the probabilistic reasoning that is what is probabilistic reasoning this all are has been asked of two marks in, in the terms of memory based question here in probabilistic reasoning if i'm talking about that uh, what is probabilistic reasoning so the aim of the probabilistic reasoning uh, logic uh, that uh, uh, is to combine the capacity of the probability theory to handle uncertainty with the capacity of the deductive logic to exploit structure to handle these uncertain data probability is the oldest technique and the way express confidence about an event is thorough probability as well where we'll go ahead with another one that is your utility theory and that has been asked as well uh, what do you mean by utility theory in the what do you mean by the utility theory here and that is that the decision making and the process of applying agents preferences utility theory says that every state has a degree of usefulness or a utility to an agent that agent will prefer the states with a higher utility as well let's go ahead with another one that is write a short note on bicyan network
here for the bison network the bison network also known as bias nets or bleeds nets or casual uh, nets as well and the probability nets are a space efficient data structure for encoding all the information in the full joint probability distributions for the set of random variables that is defining a domain as well let's go ahead with the another one and that what we have here is your that is the another question that to represent the diagrammatically the two entities in a knowledge representation so we'll go ahead to discuss that by a diagram this is fat this is your internal representation and this is your the representation as well so in this bi-directional This is representing two entities in knowledge representation. Now here only we'll go ahead with it and then we'll solve it out and that is uh, these were the questions that we are dealing here that is your memory based questions here so let's go ahead with the another one and that has been asked of application based uh, uh, that is your questions and then even though we will discuss about moreover related to the evaluation based questions as well so this is your facts facts goes to the internal representation then that goes back that is your reasoning program from uh, internal representation it will go to the English representation from uh, internal representation to English representation that is your English generation And from English representation to internal generations, representation is your English understanding. These were the two entities in the knowledge representations here. Let's go ahead with another one that is your give a systematic diagram to show the different levels of knowledge representation so that we have. This is different levels of knowledge representation. So this is different levels of knowledge representation. The first we have here is your mental image. Second is your written test. Third is character string. The fourth is binary number. And this is magnetic spots. This is a different levels of knowledge representations here. Let's go ahead with another one and that what we have to discuss as well and that is in the terms of a table that will solve it out and that is your given example which shows the concept of tautologies. Concept of tautologies. So we'll go ahead with this tautologies here A, B, then A tends to B, then A, A tends to B. And of course, A. A tends to be, tends to be as well. So here we'll go ahead to draw our table here. So here, if A is uh, true and B is true, then A tends to be true. This uh, will be true and as well as this will be true. If A true and B false, then this is false, false and true. If it is false and this is true then of course we have true false and true 
and if a is false and b is false then of course this is true and this is false and as well as this is true as well so this is the representation how you can form a concept of tautologies and that you have to show within a truth table here you go ahead uh, with another one and that is your depict uh, the truth table for the contingencies depict the truth table for contingencies and that what we have here is a b and of course a tends to b so here if a is true b is true then this is true in contingencies if a is true and b is false then it is false and if a is false b is true then of course it is true and if a is false b is false then it is true so that is in a contingency that performs like that now we'll have to do another one that is the convert the formula we have to convert the formula which is as follows a tends to b to c that tends to d as well into dnf So here eliminate uh, amplifications we have to do the equation has been given here and uh, that is that becomes uh, we will go ahead uh, to solve it out further that is it becomes like a tends to b into c and then d that becomes it and then after that it will be that is And then, of course, we have and then, of course, we have so hence uh, this a b this is b and uh, this b and then c as well uh, with d is in dns of the given equation that becomes the literals and are separated by the or conditions as well let's go ahead to another one that we have to convert uh, the formula into cnf and that what we have a tends to b that tends to c as well into CNF. So here this big equation will become like then it will be C as well and then that will be becoming a C B C as well and hence uh, we can say that uh, where uh, this equation that has been represented in the CNF with the form of what the equation has been given here let's go ahead to another one and that is uh, we have to translate the following English sentences uh, to the FOPL uh, the first sentence is every gardener likes the Sun so we'll go ahead that for the every gardener likes the sun this is the first sentence for every gardener likes the sun means we have to show in the representation of gardener x tends to likes x comma sun okay so every gardener likes the sun the second sentence we have here is you can fool some of the people all of the time so that is here x person a representation time that then scan full x comma t 
the another question we have here is that is all purple mushrooms are poisonous so here mushrooms purple x poisonous another we have here is that uh, we have to rewrite the following sentences in the FOL, FOPL. The first sentence is the coconut uh, is a biscuit. So coconut is a biscuit we have to represent that and for that we will go ahead with the further one only in continuing with this only because we have to you know make it uh, the English sentences into FOPL as well. So coconut uh, is uh, a biscuit here that is that means the biscuit and in bracket this coconut the second question is Mary is a child who takes coconut so Mary is a child who takes coconut here so either it is child Mary take coconut and then Mary the next question is with the sentences we have John loves children who take biscuits. So here Charles egg take biscuits eggs like John X. The next we have here that is uh, the question is for a triangle ABC it is given that the sum of the interior angle is 180 degree so for that we have ABC triangle which is ABC that tends to sum of interior angles as 180 degree So here the question is that prove that the following goal uh, with the help of knowledge base and that we have your first one is your that is B Q and for that we will do a simultaneous way uh, we will do at all that is your Q T and the third we have your is your that is B T and the fourth we have your is your S and the goal is 3. So here that is represented by, we will go ahead in here, Q and that is NQVT and then we have PQ which tends to PVS and then TVS that goes to not of S and then of course we have T that goes to not of T here. So hence it is proved here. Now we'll go ahead with another one that is uh, draw a hierarchical network to represent an information that is mouse is a rodent and rodent is a mammal. A mammal has a color and also drinks water. So the hierarchical network to represent the information where mouse is rodent, rodent is a mammal, a mammal has a color and also drinks the water. For that we'll have to draw it and that is this is rodent, this is mammal this is water so this is mouse and this is color sorry it has been this color so this is your rodent is all that is a mammal that brings water and that mouse is rodent so mouse is a and that mammal has color okay so this is the representation how you have to represent it out now we'll talk about the evaluation based question In 
solution based question the first question is that uh, this chaining starts with a list of goals and inferences engine that would search the inferences rule until it founds one which has then class and that matches a desired goal it is also called a goal driven reasoning name the chaining system and that is the first is your backward chaining The second we have here the question is given below some components of structures namely entry conditions result props rules stack a scene and is useful for predicting what will happen in certain situation and identify the structure and that is the second we have is your script the third we have here that is uh, that uh, if i'm talking about with the third question here and that is your uh, evaluation based question but uh, whether than that uh, the evaluation based question these were the two possible question that what we have to discuss let's go ahead with the sum of the topic that uh, we'll have to discuss here as well and that is define modus ponens rules in a propositional logic which has been asked in 15 16 of two marks that the logical rule of inferences from p and p tends to q in for q here p and q that can be any well formed propositional and this can be written as in the form of uh, that is that uh, p tends to q and which is q here so here that this rule says that p tends to q is true and if p is true and q is necessarily true so now we'll go ahead with another one that is define the in uh, formational equivalence and computational equivalence so in formational equivalence and computational in equivalence we have to discuss informational equivalence and computational equivalence in the informational equivalence that two representations are informally equivalent uh, that uh, if uh, the transformations from one to the other uh, demand no loss of information that is if each of uh, can be constructed from the other and in the computational uh, uh, and equivalence that two representations are computationally equivalent if the same information can be extracted from each and the same inference is drawn with about of the same amount of the computation as well let's go ahead with another one that list two application of hidden uh, and markov model so the two applications of hidden and markov model is your bioinformatics and speech recognition you can write it down the another one uh, that has been asked is your that is what is semantic analysis explain that has also been asked for um, that is of two marks and which is also important where the semantic analysis is the study of semantics or the structures and the meaning of speech it is a job of the semantic analysis to discover the grammatical patterns and the meaning of the collect uh, uh, that is colloquial speech and to uncover the specific meaning to the words in the foreign language as well where the semantic analysis draws the exact meaning or the dictionary meaning from the text and the text is checked for the meaningfulness it is done by mapping syntactic structures and object in the task domain as well going ahead with another one that is list various issues in knowledge representation that has been asked of two mark so here that is the important attributes relationship among attribute choosing granularity sets of object and finding a right structures as well these were the various issues uh, that are in knowledge representation here going ahead with this and that what we have to discuss let like list down two applications of temporal probabilistic model that the two application of temporal probabilistic models are speech recognition and tracking that has also been asked of two marks another is what are the limitations in using the propositional logic to represent the knowledge base that has also been asked of two marks that is the limitations of the propositional logic to represent the knowledge base is the first is the lots of propositional variable lots of rule and inferences of space hungry as well what the next question is that list various schemes of knowledge representation that is also of two marks that is in 17 18 the various schemes of knowledge representation is the first is the simple relational knowledge and inheritable uh, knowledge as well inferred knowledge and procedural knowledge as well
talking about inferences as we had discussed even though that as the in artificial intelligence we need to uh, need intelligent uh, computers that can be create a new logic from older logic and by evidence so generating the that conclusion from the evidence and the fact is termed as inferences and the standard pattern of the inferences that can be applied to this uh, derive chain of conclusion that led to our desired goals and are called inferences rule the best known a uh, rule is called modus ponens here now we'll go ahead to discuss about more detail in it and that is what we have to discuss here and in the same case uh, that is the state uh, the soundness property of inferences and that is has also been asked in 1819 that is of two marks so an inferences procedure is the sound if with a P, uh, you know that uh, then is the sound it then it is also called the case uh, in that case even though and the idea of the soundness is applied in logic and wherever we create a knowledge based program we use the syntax of the knowledge representation language we assign the semantics in the same way and reasoning mechanism that defines the inferences procedure as well where we had discussed the normal forms of the propositional logic in a detail here as well the another thing is that is your conjunctive normal form and disjunctive uh, normal form which is a cnf and a dnf as well and now we'll talk about what is a universal quantifier so universal quantifier is a symbol of logical representation which specifies the statement within its ranges is true for everything or every instance of a particular thing the universal quantifier is represented by the sign that has been we are using many times here which resembles as inverted a here now we'll go ahead with another one that is your essential uh, quantifier essential quantifier the type of the quantifier which expresses the statement within its scope is true for at least one instance of something it is denoted by logical operator which has been represented in the form and that which resembles an inverted e and uh, which it, it uh, when it is used with the predicate variable then it is called essential quantifier talking about the last question of the session that is what are the types of the variable in foc so there are the two types of variables in the first order logic the free variable and a bound variable in a free variable a variable is said to be a free variable in a formula uh, that if uh, it occurs outside the scope of the quantifier and the bound variable is the variable is said to be a bound variable and the formula if it occurs uh, within the scope of the quantifier here now we'll go ahead and we'll end up with this and this is your uh, unit 2 and unit 3 small uh, 2 marks uh, question possible questions we had discussed that is on memory based uh, questions as well as application based as well as your evaluation based questions as well and now we had cover up in the unit one is uh, the, that is your introduction which is introduction introduction to artificial intelligence foundations and history of artificial intelligence application of artificial intelligence intelligent agent structures of intelligent agent computer vision natural language processing the second unit is introduction to search which is introduction to search searching for solutions on informed search strategies informed search strategies local search algorithm and optimistic problem adversarial search search for the games and alpha beta pruning as well in unit third we have to cover up the knowledge representation and reasoning which is knowledge representation and reasoning propositional logic theory of uh, first order logic inferences in the first order logic forward and a backward chaining resolution probabilistic reasoning utility theory hidden marker model and bison network in unit third we have cover up even though the two marks possible question we had cover up in these three units that is unit one unit two and unit three here now in the next coming class we'll start with unit two uh, unit four of uh, machine learning of two possible uh, marks uh, you know that is a small marks that is a two marks possible questions that is machine learning in the machine learning supervised and unsupervised learning decision tree statistical learning model learning with a complete data and that is naive based model learning with a hidden uh, data em algorithm reinforcement learning as well in unit five that is a pattern recognition which is pattern recognition introduction design principles and the pattern recognition system and statistical pattern recognition parameter estimation method principal component analysis and linear discriminant analysis classification technique nearest neighbor rule bias classifier support vector machine and that is SVM that is K uh, means clustering as well that what we have to cover up and we will go ahead with uh, the two marks possible question as well so first of all it's a huge request from my side to all the viewers please go through with the subscribe button and please like share and subscribe our channel so that many and maximum people can get the information at once and even the you can also also enjoy the video as well in a simultaneous way we are uh, dealing with uh, the data warehousing and my data mining even though artificial classes this is the next class will be the last class so hopefully for the artificial intelligence we will cover up uh, all the possible two marks for questions here 
and then uh, we will go ahead with the uh, we are simultaneously doing uh, the com uh, computer graphics as well and as well as the principle of uh, programming languages as well and as well as reasoning for the competition basis you can improve your reasoning for that as well so thank you hope you enjoy this video if you like this video please give a thumbs up and give a suggestion on the comment box please like share and subscribe our channel so that many and maximum people can get the information at once and even though you can also enjoy the video as well thank you thanks for subscribing us thank you for supporting us thank you